What's up everyone, Arif here, and welcome back to Getting Started in Streaming. In this episode, we are going to take a look at a remote control application piece of software called DeckBoard. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've ever seen something like the Elgato Stream Deck that allows you to have at your fingertip functionality to control your stream, do scene switches, effects, and all that other kind of good stuff, this software will let you do it, and this software is indeed free. Now, there is a $5 application kind of pro version, but we'll touch on that later on, and more of it will be covered in the review coming on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But let, let's just talk about DeckBoard and getting it all set up, because one thing I will say is there is not a lot of documentation, and this will help you guys a lot. Now, to start with, we're going to need two pieces of desktop software, meaning running on your computer, and that is the DeckBoard application software, and we're going to need WebSocket. So let's start by going to Google and just typing in DeckBoard OBS app, and it'll take you to the DeckBoard website. It looks like this, and we're going to want to click Download for Windows. So once you get that downloaded, you're going to want to get the WebSocket plugin for OBS. So we're going to just Google OBS WebSocket plugin, and on the OBS plugin site, we see here there's WebSocket. We're going to click that. And rather than looking at the file directories and all that, we're just going to get the Windows installer, which is recommended by the developers. And we're just going to download that and install that. So now once we have both pieces of software installed, we're going to look at the actual deck board desktop application. Now you can see it's very no frills. It's just a grid layout where you can put your buttons in. At the top, we have OBS, we have Streamlabs, Spotify, and you can see there's this Wi-Fi logo with a QR code, which is what you're gonna to use to pair your phone to this application. You can also connect via USB if you so desire, log in via Twitch or Spotify or Twitter, and then just some little other settings, but they're not important for this, for this tutorial. Now, I'm just gonna show you in this video how to do basic setup. And for basic setup, we're just gonna be doing scene switches on our OBS using this application. So in this grid, we're gonna click the first button here. And you're gonna see it has a new button. You can pick the color, the paint, the background. You can pick the shape and the color of the font, or you can load in your own image if you so desire. For a label, we're just gonna do mirror, M-I-R. That's my main computer that I normally stream on. And we're going to say this is going to be a keyboard macro. Now, if we click on this, it doesn't have to be a keyboard macro. It can be a switchboard. It can be a multi-action. Or you can do an advanced macro where you can put in a whole bunch of key inputs and make it execute that. But for this, I just want it very simply to be a keyboard macro, just a one button kind of thing. And we're just going to say this will be the F2 key. Now, where do we want this input to be ran? So. Like, as, like I said, this is talking over a WebSocket, over your network, to a piece of software. Now, you can see also that with Twitter and Spotify, it can talk to a number of things. So when we say we want it to run on, we're going to say we want it to run on OBS. So when we press this button, it's going to connect to our OBS. Well, it's already connected, but it's going to talk to our OBS and execute that key command. And this is going to be important here in a second. So let's click and do OBS 64. And we're going to click add. And now we see here we have a mirror button. And we're going to do one more and we're going to call it Death Star. And that is my laptop out in my bar area. And I'm doing that so you can see the scene switches in real time. Now, the one other thing we have to do to get this to work, and this is where the severe lack of documentation really is noticeable, is how do you actually get this to talk to OBS? It doesn't happen just by magic or the WebSocket. You have to kind of have a little bit more there. So we want to click on settings in our OBS. Let's click on settings and let's go down to hotkeys. And then you can see under your hotkeys, every scene you have has its own available set of hotkeys. So we want to do scene switch under the death star and we're going to make that F3. And we want to do scene switch under mirror as F2. Once we've done that, let's click OK. Now that is the whole desktop done. That's the whole thing. Now let's go to Google's Play Store and get the DeckBoard mobile app. Now this is where the free and pro versions come in. Uh, from what I can see, the pro version is just an ad-free experience with a few more layouts. That's really all I can see. I can't see much more than that. And I am still working with it. Like I said, a lot of this will be covered in the review coming on the channel. But for the time being, the free version will do just fine. 
So we want to download the free version and it's gonna ask you for an IP address. You do not need to put in an IP address manually. Instead, click that Wi-Fi logo at the top of the desktop app and just scan it in. Once you scan it in, you will be it will be automatically connected to your to your mobile app and that's it. It'll automatically import all the entire layout that you have and everything with it. So we can see on the mobile app if it's copying everything, you'll have my two buttons here. Now that we have the mobile app all connected, I can see my two buttons here. You have to just take my word on it, but my two buttons are here and we're going to actually do the scene switches now. Now I can see mirror and death star. So let's go and hit the mirror button and we're going to see the scene switch. Now you have seen I was just on was Sputnik, which is the remote computer that I'm on where I'm doing this whole tutorial video. So I'm going to switch it back to Sputnik now that it's converted to mirror. And I'm going to hit Death Star and that will connect to my bar computer. And you can see there is my 3D printer. And if I hit mirror, it'll automatically switch to mirror. Now, the one thing you do have to know is it's not exactly instantaneous. It is very, very close, but there is a little bit of a lag delay. Uh, I'm still working on a lot of that to see if we can bring that down. But in the meantime, though, that is how you do it. That is how you configure a deck board to work with your OBS. And it's very rinse and repeat for a lot of other softwares. So tinker with it, try it. And if you like this video, guys, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe, especially subscribe, trying to get to a thousand subs on this channel. We're at 900 and some change, and I really would appreciate it. But there you guys go. There is Deckboard, a free Stream Deck alternative. Does it have all the robust features of Stream Deck? Not that I can see, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen in the future. This is a very, very good app. And for those of you streamers on a budget, especially right now when this is being recorded on April 6th, 2020, you know what I mean. This is a very good way for you to kind of get started and bring in higher production value to your stream. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I've been Arif. This has been Getting Started in Streaming, and I will see all of you on the next video. Bye.